And here we are. It's Thursday night. Uh, Thursday the 30th of January. 30 days of September, April, June, November, all the rest of it. So it's two days till February. Is that when you do Rabbits, Rabbits? What? Uh, on the rabbits, rabbits. Is that the 1st of February or is it the 1st of March? I've I don't know. no idea. No. I would guess Rabbits March, but I don't know what it is. Actually, it doesn't really matter. It's got nothing to do with e-cigs. Good evening. <laughs> it's it's going to be it's going to be a strange night tonight. We had hoped to have had Nikki Sinclair. Nikki Sinclair had hoped to have been here, but her travel arrangements have meant that she can't join us this evening, which is is a, a, a great shame. She will though come and do the show at some point. But I'm joined by two, not just one, but two. I'm going to say gorgeous ladies, for in the left hand monitor as you look at it, is the effervescent loveliness, the bounteous beautifulness and bountilicious babe that is the one and only Sav. How are you tonight my dear with your new hair? I'm absolutely fine, I've got heat on, it's great. Is that because you've got your new hair on? Yeah. See, great, man. Long, long haired ladies great stuff in the right hand monitor as you look at it we have the posh bird those of you that are on twitter will know her as the posh bird from Eka, it is the one and only Lorian. how are you doing posh i was better <laughs> but i'm fine thank you yes good good how's the weather down there in boscastle it's not snowing ah at all it's been cold but bright all day that's always good. Yeah. We, we like it when it's bright. Bright is good. Bright is something that a lot of those that would oppose us definitely aren't. And we've got a few of them kicking about tonight, but all kinds of stuff to share with you. Um, and that will come up. I've remembered, Sav. I nearly, nearly forgot, but I've well remembered. Done. It is getting better. We'll get this right one of these days. Um, the show is called VT Talk. And here are the titles. <laughs> Yes, indeed, it is VT Talk, as ever was. Now, if you're on Twitter, and if you're not, you should be, you will see that the conversation around e cigs has been growing exponentially over the last week or so. True, Sav? Yep. It's gone absolutely crackers. Um, Robert West, for instance, has begun tweeting a lot more than he ever has. True, Posh? Uh, Lorian? <laughs> yes, very true. There's... There's all kinds is happening. And I came across a Dr. Emma V. Beard on there, who I'd never heard of, but had retweeted a tweet in which I'd been tweeted, kind of, by Robert West. And sent me to a page. And here is that page. Press that button, David, that works. Um, and it says, how are the English stop smoking services responding to growth in use of electronic cigarettes? And you'll see right there, look, Emma Beard. She's a Cancer Research UK, Health Behaviour Research Centre, University College London UK, National Centre for Smoking Cessation and Training London UK, and corresponding author at uh, Cancer Research UK, Health Behaviour Research Centre, University College London, blah, all of those, right? And here's, here's the thing, it says, and I've only got the abstract of this because it's, actually we found it about 10 minutes before the show started, didn't we? Yep. So it says, the objective is to assess the extent of electronic cigarette use by smokers attending stop smoking services, the advice given about electronic cigarettes, and whether this usage is recorded, because... Um, for a, a large, a large, large number of us, we've been wondering whether the figures that's being put out are anywhere close to right. And it's quite interesting what this study's come up with. 
The methods were 58 managers and 1,284 practitioners completed an online survey. Questions covered use of electronic cigarettes, the advice given and whether use was recorded in client databases. So this isn't really expressing any preferences. The results, I'm not going to go through all the figures because quite frankly I can't do the maths that quick. But it says, although use of electronic cigarettes by smokers in stop smoking services is common, Few provisions are in place to record their use. Practitioners mostly advise that products are not licensed. And the practical implications, it says here, is there is a need to consider additional training for practitioners on use of e-cigarettes and harm reduction generally to ensure that advice is consistent and evidence-based. And that is... I think a magnificent step forward. What in effect this study is saying is look, folks are using them, you need to get used to it and you need to advise them properly. What do you make of that Lorian? I think it's spot on. I think we know it's spot on. Um, and something that I found out today as well, which funnily enough links into this and this whole smoke, NHS smoking cessation services thing, um, Twitter again. Before the summit, I got involved with um, a cessation services manager um, called Louisa. Um, she was tweeting about the summit and she was very nervous, very negative. And I tried to engage her and sort of say, you know, can we meet up and have a chat at the summit? And I didn't get round to it and hadn't heard anything from her since. Then I happened to see Clive get involved in a conversation with her. So I jumped back in again, we exchanged emails. Now, she is the manager for the Leicester area for the cessation services. Mm, mm. Yes. Now, what happened with her is she came to the summit. She was very nervous and very unsure of what was going to happen. She wasn't pro ESIG, and or her hashtag was turning point. She has now gone back to her, um, well, ever since then, they have been quietly recommending e cigs to people. She has set up two sessions with uh, public health, um, with other people in her area, um, with vapors and with a vendor as well, to explain it and share her knowledge. Um, there's a professor from the local university, a guy called Jason Hughes, mm -hmm. um, who's helping her. And their whole point is these are consumer devices. They can never be medicinal because if they are, they become useless. Um, the flavours are unbelievably important, as are the choices. No SIG likes. They only recommend second generation devices. Um, and they've just had something approved, which only happened yesterday, so I'm not allowed to say the details. But it's going to mean it's the, the only cessation service in the country to actually be able to officially recommend and advise on electronic cigarettes. Oh, wow. That is big. And, and, and you're saying that these are definitely being um, consumer devices. There's nothing medicinal about it. This is harm yeah. reduction. This is risk reduction. This is yeah. what we all use them for. That yes. is absolutely fabulous. And I have, I'm looking at Sav because I saw she was holding her hand to her ear while you were on. So that means either somebody's told her something in her ear or there's lots coming in from chat, which is it, Sav? We've got a lot coming in from chat. Um, regarding just the last bit that Lorian said, um, Moonlit says, did I wake up in a parallel universe? Whip it up has said, am I hearing this right? And Entropy 72 has said, hearts and minds, hearts and minds, winning the battle one person at a time. Mm -hmm. And regarding the first part, Mark Shaw says, I've heard her name before, but not via Twitter. I'm sure she's done something with Professor Hayek. Uh -huh. Blaze has said, here, here. Moonlit again says, well, this looks positive. Woody Vapin says, positive, well, I'll be damned. Big Craig says, it's all we've been asking for, really. And Lamental has said, let's hope doctors can remain independent and not tow the BMA line. Well, uh, the, the fact of the matter is, if you think about it, if this is a stop smoking service, SSS, <laughs> unfortunate that, but never mind. If, if, if it, it sounds as though it's a pilot, and I know you can't say too much, so I'm just going to speculate, right? Sounds to me like this is a pilot to see whether or not it can be made to work because if they've looked at Robert West's figures and they're almost bound to have, they'll have seen the upturn in e-cigs has been offset by the downturn 
not offset, but there's a downturn in, in cigarette prevalence that's been accounted for by the upturn in e-cigs. And if they've seen that, given that there are consumer devices they currently stand on, hopefully always will be, then they must know that there is something here. What, what really got to me about Emma Beard was that she said she wants to see evidence-based. This is all about evidence-based decision-making. Um, and Sav's gone, which is going to be interesting because I really did need to bring chat in at various different points. I've got no doubt she'll come back. Have you gone, Sav? She's gone. Our PC okay. keeps, keeps on barfing out on her. Um, well, I'll tell you, I can add something to that, actually, about the evidence-based thing. Um, a part of what, uh, is two things, part of what this, this lady um, is going to do will give us um, some second-generation specific figures over the next year, which we haven't actually had. Um, so just second generation devices. Um, and now I've forgotten the other part of what I was going to say. Carry on, Dave, it will come back to me. <laughs> See, Sav's going, he's throwing me as well. Now. Yes, I'm, I'm lost without her. I mean, she's such a big, big part of the show. And when she's not there, because I, re I, actually, <laughs> I actually don't read chat because I can't. Uh, during the course of this and, and Sav will bring that in. I'm going to do my best to get her back. I have a feeling I know what's happened um, and we'll get there. We will get there. But yes, um, the fact that, that this is happening um, down in Leicester and the fact that there is, uh, I believe it's called a post meeting, is it? Oh, this, yes, well... I'll, yeah. put, uh, let me, I'll put that up on screen because, it, again, it's worth sharing with everybody that this has been punted for a while. And while I'm doing that, I'm also logging Sav out and bringing her back in. Um, it's there to be read at. Uh, you'll hear that beeping in the background. And no, she's crashed. OK, we'll wait. Right. Electronic cigarettes produce a nicotine-containing vapour which uses inhale. The products have been shown to have a role in smoking reduction and cessation. Their use is increasing rapidly and the number of UK smokers using electronic cigarettes in their last quit attempt recently overtook the number using over-the-counter medically licensed nicotine-containing products such as nicotine patches and gum. Tobacco companies are starting to gain a significant share of the electronic cigarette market. There have been issues about the safety and quality of electronic cigarettes as well as their promotion and marketing. Other issues relate to whether the products will act as a gateway and or normalise smoking and the impact on smoke-free legislation. This event will bring together stakeholders from government, regulators, industry and academia to discuss the concerns. Now, this is going to be, what are they calling it? it it's from the Parliamentary Office of Science and Technology, a post-meeting. And it was scheduled for Thursday the 6th of February, but we understand it's been delayed because apparently Jane Ellison can't make it. Is that the information you have as well, Lorian? It's not. I, I haven't had a reason, but just that it's been delayed. And my first, they first said it was going to be in spring, and then my second email said that it would be later in the year. Yes. Well, if I throw it... Ah, we have, we have a sav, I think. Hang on. Answer with video. Are you there? I am. No idea what happened there. That was my fault. Uh, Skype decided it was going to do an update right in the middle of that and it just froze everything. Isn't it a pain in the backside? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm going to say something, nothing whatever to do with e-cigarettes. If there's anybody from Microsoft watching, stop frigging about with it! <laughs> Bloody hell. Right, back to the plot. Yes. Yes. So... Chairing it is Baroness Elora Finlay, Member of the House of Lords. Now, before we go any further, Sav and I have both met Baroness Finlay, haven't we? Yes, we have, lovely lady. And she's a lovely lady, and I got the impression she was quite pro e -cigs. Didn't you? Yes, very much so. She gets them, she understands it, so that's one good point. Andrew Black, the Tobacco Programme Manager, Department of Health, probably standing in for Deborah Arnott. Professor Peter Hayek of the Tobacco Dependence Research Unit, Queen Mary University, one of the good guys, he gets it. Professor Gerald Hastings, to be confirmed, he's going to be upset. His name is Gerard Hastings. <laughs> what a shame. From the Centre for Tobacco Control Research, University of Stirling. Now, he actually gets e -cigs. 
he does actually get e cigs he just doesn't like the marketing but then he doesn't like any marketing at all and that includes perfume marketing that has naked ladies or semi-naked ladies winona rider specifically Sharia Kupal, I've never heard of, is Director of Advertising Policy and Practice for the Advertising Standards Association, that's the ASA. Um, one can assume that they will be, or that person will be very pragmatic. And then, I've never heard of this one, Catherine Devlin from Electronic Cigarette Industry Trade Association. Does that mean anything to you, Sav? Never heard of them. Nah. I think, I think, given that she's last, see, in all of these things, it's the last word that's important, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you, you read through an article that's complete and utter garbage, a festering pile of rancid dingo kidneys. And if the last paragraph says, even though everything we've said about these things is crap, we really do think you should go out and get them because they promise this, that and the other. That's what people remember. And Catherine Devlin's last on the list. And that's not by accident. Of that, I am absolutely certain. There will be a, di a discussion, then the chair's closing remarks, and then it closes. So that, that is actually what's happening. That's, I think it's fabulous. Um, it would appear that the voice is being heard. Now, because it's being delayed, there are moves afoot to try and get a user representative involved in this, i.e. our vapor that's not part of industry. Who that will be, no clue. But as we find out more, we'll bring that to you. Um, what do you make of that, Lorian? I have mixed feelings about the panel. Um, I know what you're saying about Gerard Hastings, um, but he's so vociferous about them. That makes me very uncomfortable. Um, and yeah, as for the lack of consumer representation, that, that bothers me, and that's why we emailed them. Um, and my, my my last email to them was to say, well, you know, essentially, if you've got now that much time, that gives you time to rejig it and get a consumer in there. Um, to which I was told, well, we'll look later at the time about who's going to be on the panel, which says to me maybe the entire panel's in question. If it's redone later in the year, it might be completely different. Which is in and of itself an interesting thought, because obviously they're constructing the panel to reflect the um, the opinions. I'm going to try and stop saying on both sides of the argument, but you know what I mean. Um, I'll say on both sides of the argument for the moment because it does seem like battle lines are drawn. But they do seem to be reflecting um, the opinions that are there without bringing in the completely rabid nut jobs. And I'm not going to mention Stan Glantz, but I'm sure a chat will. Over to you, Sav. No need to mention Stan Glantz at all. No, don't, don't mention him. <laughs> No, I won't mention them at all. I won't mention Stan Glantz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Diana Lawless has said, Andrew Black will be whispering in Ellison's ear for this one. Entropy72 said, The ASA has already said they've seen no evidence of marketing to children, so that should be positive. Yes. Mitch Doggett says, Kath Devlin always gets the last word. She's a legend. She is um, a legend, that's true. V Power says it's fabulous if it's not delayed till after the TPD vote. Um, and chat of agree, don't mention Stan Glance. Right, we won't mention Stan Glance. I'm, I'm going to say, I, I'm actually. How can I put this? You know, I'm not the most optimistic bloke on the planet, right? I see that actually the TPD vote. I'm not going to put any money on it, let's put it that way. Not at the minute. But there are things we can do about that which I'm going to cover in the second half. Uh, or possibly the third, it just depends on when we get to it. But, but, and this is the important part, no matter what, the TPD, as it currently stands, has in a little sentence that says there is a review in two years no matter what. And I think... It would be foolhardy if everything goes completely pear-shaped and titsup.com. It would be foolhardy to give up the fight. I think we have reached a point, as was said in chat, where we are gaining hearts and minds. We are getting the right information across. People are taking notice, and it's the right people that are taking notice. And I think we've got to maximise on that. Now, there'll be many people who would say that this is almost certainly as a direct result of what occurred last Thursday um, with the Chris Choi Tonight programme, that it's 
catapulted e-cigs front and centre and if you were watching the telly over the weekend and channel hopping it would have at one or two points during the day it would have been damned hard to find a channel that didn't have e-cigs on isn't that right oh, it was everywhere it was yeah it was everywhere you looked go on you you two have a natter about that because it was what did you and more of the i should yes i i'm a fool me <laughs> aha i had forgotten this because posh here she's been on more radio stations than the pirate flag haven't you? Two, I think. Well, yeah. but, so, come on, spill the beans. What were you doing? Actually, no. Hold that thought. Order your thoughts. And we'll come back to what Lorian's been doing on the radio. Because she's been doing very posh things on the... Because she's posh. She's been doing very posh things on the radio. And we'll talk about that a little bit when we come back. It's called dropping her in it because she didn't know we were going to talk about that. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to get you... Th stop it. I can see how many fingers you've got up underneath that. Look. <laughs> we'll take the adverts and be back in two minutes. in Yorkshire for your ECG needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv And we're back in the room. Now, welcome back to VT Talk with myself, Dave Dawn, Posh Lorian, and the effervescent loveliness that is Sav. I'm so glad you've now got a nickname, Lorian. <laughs> oh, yes, am I? <laughs> so have I. Yeah, but we can't do that, Annie. It's decent inches done, isn't it, Lorian? <laughs> right, look. Well, she's thinking. Um, Sav did mention uh, that we'd been asked, could we mention the petition that's going round to... Well, you read it out, Sav. Oh, OK. Um, could we cover the petition regarding the freeness of the internet? I know it's not ASIC related, but it's important. They're trying to take away everything from us. It's true. It is absolute, absolutely true, yes. Um, go and sign it absolutely go and sign it or what it's what it's going to do is it's going to stop the big isps and governments from interfering in what we can do on the internet and let's face it if it does all go pear-shaped in a bad way we're going to need as much internet as we can get in order to bring stuff in from foreign claims as it were there you go plug in it's it's all over twitter if you're not on Twitter, I keep saying this, if you're not on Twitter, you should be. Get on there. It's not difficult to use. You can get it on your iPad, on your um, Android device, your PC, your Mac. You can get it on even, You can get it on an Xbox 360, can't you? I think so, yeah. Um, PS3, PS4, I think you can get them everywhere. And as Entropy72 says, Darknet. Pardon? Darknet. Ah, yes. Silk Road as it were. Silk Road, indeed. 
so right there you go please 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 do that i know it's not ac related we all know it is but it, it is actually quite important and we're going to be talking about something that's not ac related but actually is ac related in a little while after we've discovered what posh laurian's been up to on the radio we've been speaking in a posh voice and telling people about e-cigs darling what have you been doing I have been using my best telephone voice. Um, no, no, it was just it, it was just a case of I was on Twitter um, very late on Saturday night, and somebody happened to tweet that uh, they were discussing e-cigs on Radio Five. Um, I jumped in in the last couple of minutes of the segment um, to hear some obnoxious, self-righteous, um, patronising ex-smoker with the kind of attitude of, well, I stopped, therefore anybody else who can't manage that is pathetic and weak and beholden to an addiction, um, which got my blood boiling. So I sent in a lovely text um, <coughs> to finish the segment, just saying, you know, if you if you do discuss it again, it's not that simple and I would love to contribute. Um, so then I got a phone call to ask if I would go on and they kind of shoehorned me in after the news when the segment actually finished. Um, so I don't think the presenter was best pleased. Um, and yeah, we, we you know we discussed it and, and threw a lot of kind of anti arguments at me. Um, my favourite being about how his mates that use cigar likes go outside for a, a vape with it, their mates outside the pub and end up smoking fags, which of course leads perfectly into the fact that that's why we don't want public bans um, for exactly that reason. Yes. Um, I, you know, I haven't listened back to it, so I you know the feedback was good. So. I, uh, Hopefully it went all right. It was um, it was quite daunting. I've listened. I've 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 listened back to it. I've listened back to it, and it was better than all right. Good. So what what was the second one? The second one was quite funny. That was the BBC Cornwall, um, which I don't get in Boss Castle. You can't get. I can get BBC Wales. Right. I can't get BBC Cornwall. But um, Boss Castle's in Cornwall. Yeah, that would be in Cornwall. Yeah. Who are? Um, <laughs> But I, so I hadn't heard the show that was on. Again, I just saw a tweet. Um, I tweeted them back. They sent them a message, spoke to them on the phone, and then he called me in. And that was weird because the presenter is actually from Boss Castle. So rather than going straight into an aggressive, you know, it's all crap thing, I, it was all conversations about the Boss Castle floods and how long I've been living here, which was a bit disarming. Um, but he was a lot gentler, actually, when it came to talking to e -cigs. And again, it was a case of just being... Um, honest and and calm and stuff although i made a major mistake by comparing e vapor to car exhausts which in north cornwall when you have no air pollution whatsoever was probably completely stupid <laughs> well i don't know i mean it's it's definitely safer than car exhausts so mm. and you've got yeah. no pollution down there at all no we've got ever so good air down here so air pollution isn't a comparator <laughs> for no, no cows at all no cows not near me, no, no, and that kind of dissipates fairly quickly. It goes up in these holes in the ozone, doesn't it? No, what ha what happens with it is it collects in a barn, somebody sparks a fag up and blows the barn to bits. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently that, that was in the news two days ago. Yes, it was. Yeah, so e-cig vapour in a van is absolutely safe, unlike cow farts. Yes. Go on, Sav, you've got stuff there, I can tell. Yeah, there's a lot of it again, I can't <laughs> <laughs> They're not, on, yeah. they're not on cow farts as well, are they? Yes, we've got on the farts and cows. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Lena Marie has said, we had a programme like that yesterday. It made the Cancer Association actually have to start interacting with us, and the same with the Health Ministry, which is brilliant. It's great. Very boring, who was on the radio also in Glasgow, I think. He I was. On, and he says he was talking about the public building ban in Scotland and mm -hmm. he told them it was pants and urged them to go and read nicotinepolicy.net Well and I, can, I can just quite imagine as well I've not had a chance to listen back to that one uh, at this point in time VB I shall be doing it but I can imagine exactly what it would be and, and it, it's it's great. Sorry Sav, carry on No problem, Mark Shaw has said I think all the little victories we get will add up into a major win in the end even if we lose some big battles along the way Moonlit has said, oh goody, militant ex-smokers. Uh, we all know them. I'm, I've, I've got, I'm sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive in at this point because I did a little bit of radio for BBC Newcastle this morning. They rang me at the crack of Sparrowfart. I mean, quarter past eight is an unearthly hour. Mm. It really is. Isn't that right, Sav? Mm. It's not a good time of the day. Not for anybody that's sitting up at three o'clock in the morning trying to get up to speed with what's happening in ACs worldwide. Anyway, they rang me up to comment on this... Uh, 
smoking in cars with children present and defined children as being aged 18, oh, sorry, under 18. So basically up to 17 years and 364 days. I don't quite know what changes in that one day. Uh, so I had me a little bit sad, but there was a, a rabid anti-smoker on before then, and dear God almighty, this woman was working on about how, not just smoking, not just smoking, but everything associated with it, I assume she meant e-cigs, should be banned from houses. And if people want to smoke or anything like that, they should be forced to go outside to do that. We're up against it, you know, because these bloody Puritans want to suck every last little bit of joy out of your life. Which leads me nicely on to the next bit I wanted to have a look at, because you will remember years and years ago that when they said about plain packaging, smoking bans, that this wasn't a slippery slope, that it wouldn't move on to anything else now i'm gonna i'm gonna gonna guess here but i'm gonna reckon that the majority of people that are sitting in chat will enjoy a cup of coffee i will take a poll in the studio do you like a cup of coffee lauren i rely on decaf coffee as much as i do caffeinated right sav i'm not a coffee drinker but i'm a caffeine drinker Definitely. right let me put this on screen this is going to get some blood boiling. I did mine this morning. There you are. Caffeine addiction is a widespread problem. And I was reading this through and you could have put nicotine in every time it says caffeine. If you can't get by without caffeine and won't give it up, even if you have a condition that may be impacted by it, such as pregnancy, a heart condition or a bleeding disorder, you may have caffeine use disorder. Now, I... I'm sorry, that is exactly the language that the anti-e-cig people use. And I nearly said it as a bleeding disorder, uh, but it's a bleeding disorder. And let's carry on. It says, caffeine is the most commonly used drug in the world, according to the authors of a new paper, and is found in everything from coffee and soda to OTC pain relievers and a bunch of stuff with some form of the word energy on the label. But they say health professionals have been slow to characterise problematic caffeine use and acknowledge that some cases may call for treatment. So if you joke that caffeine isn't a drug, it's a vitamin, you may have a condition. We'll, we'll, we'll stick the links everywhere. It, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, and then gets to this bit. The American... Psychiatric Association recognised caffeine use disorder as a health concern in need of additional research in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders, DSM-5, which is used by menthol, menthol, menthol? Men <laughs> mental health professionals in the United States, but is no longer considered valid by the National Institute of Mental Health. The National Institute of Mental Health, which classifies nicotine use as a mental disorder. There is misconception among professionals and lay people alike that caffeine is not difficult to give up. However, in population-based studies, blah, blah, bloody blah, blah, blah. Um, let's get down to here. Healthy adults should limit caffeine consumption to no more than 400 milligrams a day. Blah, blah, blah. The LD50 is around about a gram, which is the same as nicotine. Blah, 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 bloody blah. So anybody out there that's sitting watching this show and thinking, well, it's only e -cigs. It's not. It's everything. They're out. They are out to suck every last ounce of joy out of everything we do. Which is why we've got to fight and why we've got to win for e -cigs. Because if we don't, they're going to nick the coffee off us next and then it'll be tea and Monster, and Red Bull, and other energy drinks are available. For whatever reason, there seems to be an upsurge in Puritanism. I thank God that we're starting to get more mainstream media and television stuff. Has chat gone ip? For once, I have to say, chat were quicker than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I could not get half of what chat had to say on that, but I'll read you what I do have. Okey-doke. 
<laughs> Very boring, says, I run on three things. Caffeine, nicotine, and sugar. Huge Hands says, sucking the joy out of life. Thought that was the wife's job. <laughs> <laughs> Castello said, Boulder Dash, and he did actually say that. Boulder Dash? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Kudos. I know. Entropy72 says, I have a bleeding disorder. I'm bleeding sick of being mollycoddled. <laughs> Wooly Vapen says, This page is the scrapings of a bull's scrotum snorted by a duck excreted into duck poop. I got the best one. <laughs> the Furious Fury says, Jesus, whatever next. In the end, we will end up with some sort of injection every day to remove our emotions. Wooly Vapen says, They'll soon release caffeine cessation devices. John Divest. Oh, 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 oh. They have. You can no. get caffeine patches. No. Yes. Back to you. John Diver says, if they come after bacon, it's war. <laughs> and Kat's passed me a few things. Uh, Moonlit says, I am a lots of asterisks, <laughs> adult human being. <laughs> we didn't evolve this far to be told what we can and can't do. The law says I'm old enough to make my own decisions, at least for the moment. These things are legal, so they can go away. Go forth and multiply? Uh, yep. Yeah. And Super 7 says they will want to ban sex next, so that so that they can make us all wankers. Right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, did I, I did tell the story about that law they passed in the States about Sunday mornings, didn't I? Did, yeah. yeah, look it up. I'm not going to tell it again. But bottom line on it is, the governor's wife didn't like on a Sunday morning, so she got a law passed to stop it. That's okay. what's happening here. There are people out there, seriously, the only reason they oppose is because they don't like it. And we need, as far as possible, to fight against that. I think it's time the worm really turned and it's gratifying to see, certainly on Twitter, and I think you two will bear me out on this, we're seeing a lot more worm turning. I mean, Lorian is probably a bigger twit than I am. I mean, I'm quite a big twit. You are a big twit, aren't you? I mean, what, what have you been seeing coming on there lately? Have you seen a lot of people kind of crossing the Rubicon and, and if you like, coming to the light side of the force? Yeah, definitely. On all on all subjects, to be honest. Um, and not only on Twitter, but when you start reading um, responses to articles on in newspapers and whatnot, there's a lot of the same sentiment there as well, in the sense of, leave us alone, it's fine, it's legal, it's not impairing our behaviour, we're fully functioning adults, if it's sugar, if it's fat, if it's caffeine, whatever it is. I think generally there is a movement now to it is going too far. It It is... I think you're right. I think it's nice to see people are now going, hang on, just a minute. Enough. We've had enough. And we have. We've had enough. Have you? You've had enough as well, Sav. This is you, not Chad. Oh, I've I've totally, totally had enough. Um, no way. No way. It's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I've just had a question that's come through from Kat, who said... Why do you think I got a phone call supposedly from Tesco's asking how many times I purchase energy drinks? From Tesco's? From supposedly from Tesco's, yeah. To, to yeah. our cut? Yeah, she cut. got this phone call beginning in the last week, I think it was, asking her how many times she purchases energy drinks. Oh, what a stupid... What? How random is that? I don't know. I've been... I can't even... I mean, I know you get the uh, the surveys going on to find out, you know, how often do you buy Go Cat or Kitty Litter or when they're trying to sort out, you know, what eight out of ten cats prefer and all that kind of stuff. But energy drinks? Mm, they know. It's crazy. What the hell are they? I, I, seriously, honestly, you know, the longer I am involved in e cigs, the more my libertarian tendencies are rising to the top and I've noticed that even with heads of public health charities I'm not mentioning any names and there's no pack drill but even they're tweeting the same things the more they say this rubbish the more their libertarian tendencies tend to come to the surface which I think is probably a good thing all told yeah. now we need to take action and after the break I've got 
three bits of things to put on the screen that will tell you that we can take action, that we can be effective and a tool for helping you do that. And that will be coming up right after the break, which is coming up now. Back in two minutes, don't go anywhere. And we are back here on VT Talk with myself, Dave Dawn, the effervescent loveliness that is Sav, and Posh Lorian from Eke. <laughs> Who's getting emails by the Brazilians? Can't share them with you. Very private. It's pro prob probably from an elocution school asking her to go and teach. That's how posh she is. Anyway, yes, let us move on. Now, although Nikki Sinclair can't be with us tonight because she's traveling she has kind of left a message in that she wrote a blog for the save e-cigs a guest blog for the save e-cigs website which i happen to have here and there she is nikki sinclair who says keep up the pressure on meps guest post from nikki sinclair so that would be nikki sinclair then and if you don't know nikki has been completely behind us for as well as more or less as long as I can remember. Uh, as soon as she found out about it, she's gone crackers over e cigs. And she says, as MAP for the West Midlands, I've made it a priority to be just more than Europe. Although I fought and continue the fight for an in or out refer referendum on EU membership, I've also focused on community issues. My work is constituent led, so I've dealt with all sorts of topics ranging from football in the community to food banks. The work and causes are all wildly different and I love it. And, and I think we can all attest to that, can't we? Because yeah. she's she never off Twitter. No. E-cigarettes are both a European issue and a local issue. Vapors, in their successful attempts to contact their local MAPs, have become the most popular topic in my inbox. In fact, when I first started researching this whole debate, I was quite overwhelmed by the strength of feeling about the potential ban. So I've taken on the fact. I've voted in the Parliament against an effective ban. I've submitted questions to the European Commission, and more importantly, I've met with vapors themselves. That's all true. The BBC vape meet that was held earlier this month presented me with a unique opportunity to meet e-cig users and attempt to raise the profile of the fight we currently face. And she did. The e-cig lobby has achieved so much. However, you must keep up the pressure. Just as I was overwhelmed by the messages about e-cigs, you must lobby your local MEPs on the issue. Why not ask to meet them in person? If you own a store that is selling e-cigarette related products, why not offer to show the MEP round? It all adds weight to your argument. Writing to the press is crucial. Sometimes when it comes to the media, it can seem like you are fighting an uphill battle to get your particular issue highlighted, even when you know it's a critical issue. You should not be disheartened. The slow drip drip effect of giving the newspapers stories about e-cigarettes will eventually pay off. 
If you have your own e-cig store, why not talk to your local newspaper featuring your fight to keep your business in the face of an EU e-cig ban? Hashtag. Remember, local newspapers want local news, so get an angle they'll want to feature. Why not write to the letters page also? All column inches help highlight and create awareness of your fight. Just this week, I had a large story printed in the Kidderminster Shuttle. They were keen to feature the story as they have a local e-cigarette shop and a charity who are linked with e-cigs too. I'm continuing to spread the word about the potential ban. My team have produced and delivered tens and thousands of leaflets dedicated to the subject of e-cigs and stores from across the vast West Midlands region have chosen to display them in their stores. If anybody else would like copies of the leaflet to distribute, please get in touch by email and nickymep at gmail.com. I'll continue to pressure the European Parliament, but I urge you to keep up the pressure on your MEPs. And I'll echo that. And I'll say not just your MEPs, but your MPs too. As we've seen, notwithstanding all the good work that Nicky Sinclair and others have been doing, we have seen that the UK Parliament is actually now beginning to discuss this in a bit more a more positive manner, and I don't mean positive from the, the, the point of view of, of, of how they view e but the fact that they're actually doing something about it and actually talking about it and putting events on. So I keep in, in very, very good close touch with my own MP, and I got this. Dear David, thank you for your email regarding e -cigs. My next surgery will be on Friday 7th, blah, 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 and will be held at wherever. I would be grateful if you could confirm your attendance either by email or contacting my constituency office on there's the number. Now, I emailed my MP and said, I want you to read this particular page on clivebates.com. And she read it. And she's asked me to meet with her. I didn't ask for a meeting. Particularly, I said I would like to discuss it with her. She's now given me the date and time, and I'm going to go, but I'm going to take something else with me. I'll print a couple of pages off from clivebates.com, the ones that I specifically want to use, but there's something else. And this is, um, it's come from Murray Laugerson via uh, Aksh, the American Smoking and Health. Oh, Lord, why can I never remember these things? But it's the American ACSH um, outfit. And this is a document called Nicotine and Its Health Effects, I think is the, is the proper name for it. Um, nicotine and Health, yes. Nicotine and Health. And it's been pulled together by Mary Laugerson. Um, I tweeted earlier on that I'd, that I'd been reading it and I noticed a few people had picked up on it. It's on this, I think it's called Scribed, although it's spelt Scribd without an E. Um, and you can read it on iPads, you can download it and stuff. So I've downloaded it onto my iPad and I'm going to be taking that along with me because there's some really good stuff in there that you can use. And again, I'll, I want to share this particular graphic with you um, and I hope you can all see it well enough. At the top, in and I'm colourblind, so Sav, please tell me that I'm getting this right. In inhale smoke is blue. Yep. Doesn't inhale smoke is green. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then along the top there, it's got mortality risk of a never smoker. In other words, that's when a normal person's going to die, if you like. The, the risk of dying for anybody, and that is one. But if we go down to the bottom of the graph, you'll see never smoker, smoke free home. Choose nicotine gum non-smoker uses e-cig non-smoker look at that they're all the same so by using an e-cig your mortality risk is exactly the same as somebody that's never smoked and lives in a smoke-free home okay that's pretty good information to have that's bloody good information to stick to your M mp or mep and it goes up i think he's misspelled snus as snuff but it goes up to, and this, 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 
this bit you need to know because you might remember that over the last few days in various different bits one or two people have said cutting down has no effect i can't remember who it was that said it and i wouldn't give them any credit anyway glance cutting down has no effect it makes no difference as in if you smoke nine you might as well smoke 60. have a look at this because that statement is bullshit 25 plus cigarettes a day your mortality risk is just shy of four 15 it's just shy of three inhaled cigars around two and a half nine cigarettes just over two one to four cigarettes down to around about 1.5 and what that means is contrary to what some of the naysayers and gainsayers would have you believe dual use where you substitute e -cig usage for cigarettes that you would otherwise have smoked and therefore cut down on the number of cigarettes that you do smoke actually does reduce the risk of early mortality now murray laugerson you need to be aware has been an anti-smoking advocate for as long as probably i've had all of my backside he's been around a long time and he's very very keen on the anti-smoking message and he is a devout believer in e-cigs lorian i know you've been reading through this during the course of the day since i sent you the link what do you make of it uh, it's it's a really good document. And to be honest, there was stuff I learned just about nicotine anyway. So I would recommend downloading it and reading it. It's a really interesting read, and there's lots of really interesting stuff to pull out of there, especially with the e-cigs. Um, and yeah, it's nice to have on a piece of paper with charts, like you say, the cutting down thing, the dual use thing. I think it's a big part of the argument that um, is thrown at us, um, and it's nice to have something to come back with. To be honest. It certainly is. There's, there's, a, there's a whole section, part three, is all about electronic cigarettes. And reading through that, and I'll just put it on screen while I'm gobbing off because you'll be sick of the sight of my face. Um, Dave, can I quickly interrupt you? Can you put the link or give me the link for that at some point so I can put it in the chat because I don't have it on here? It's in our chat. I sent it across to you earlier on. It should be the first thing from today. I changed computers since then. Ah, oh, right. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I can do that. I will Thank get you. that in there. Um, it, it's, it's, it is so well worth reading. But have a look at this bit on competitors, rivals, regulators and health agencies. And where e-cigs faced opposition from. The cigarette industry. The pharmaceutical industry. Medical practitioners major anti-smoking groups in the United States, governments, the World Health Organization. This is an absolutely fabulous piece of work. And, and I'm, I'm going to I'll pop that across to you right now, Sav, so you can stick the link in chat. I've got it and you need to change your camera because I'm on there. Oh. Do I need to do that bit again then? Possibly, yes. Okay. Let's, I'm sorry about that. I, I pressed the wrong button. I keep <laughs> sorry, doing. Sorry, that was my fault for throwing the album. <laughs> no, it's it's and and it's it's. Uh, why the hell's it done that? Okay, sorted. Lovely. Here we go. Right. Yes. There we go. Competitors, rivals, regulators, and health agencies, and it's all the opposition. Cigarette industry, pharmaceutical industry, medical practitioners, anti-smoking groups, governments, WHO regulators have problems with electronic cigarettes as they are neither combustible tobacco products nor medicines e-cigarettes neither pay tax like tobacco products nor conform to medicinal and pharmaceutical standards it's great smokers too have had problems with the first generation electronic cigarettes they want legal access to purchase better quality longer lasting batteries nicotine to match the label efficient vaporization of nicotine adequate puff generation and at a lower price and it goes on it's 80 88 pages 82 pages 82 pages is jam-packed there's only one glaring error and that i think is as a result of when it was compiled and that is the LD50 for nicotine is incorrectly stated according to the latest research. Outside of, well, actually, it makes it, it, it's, it makes it even better that if they're considering that the LD50 is 60 milligrams, which is what's in there, rather than the 1,000 to 1,200 that we know it is, there's still no real safety issues. It's a fabulous piece of work and one that you could take, I mean, I'll, 
you print it out if you like I would take it on the iPad know the page numbers that you're going to go at and just show your MP or your MEP the salient points it is such a brilliant piece of work and, and I'm tipping my hat to Murray Laugerson and the ACSH for coming up with this document it is a brilliant piece of work and I commend it to you in the highest possible terms and you know I rarely recommend anything so if you can make an appointment to go and see your MP or MEP or preferably both and take that along and get in touch with the papers in exactly the way that Nicky Sinclair has advised that you do can you imagine can you imagine the impact that is going to have and as I say even if it all goes pear-shaped in the European Parliament will be in a position to force a re-evaluation re of the whole thing a couple of years down the road. Now that doesn't mean that I'm stopping fighting what's going on in the EU, I'm not. Plan B. Plan B. But it's also plan A to get our members of Parliament on side and saying to the UK government, look this is wrong, you need to change it in council. What, what do you think, Laurie? Go on. You're right, we do. We need to be doing as much as possible. Um, and the more we can get it out there in the public realm, the more we can get the public on side. And government are loath to do anything if they think they're going to lose favour with the public. You mean um, votes? I mean votes, yeah. That's yeah. exactly what I mean. It's as simple as that. And even if it's just things like you hear that e cigs are on your local radio station, ring them. It just, we all have the knowledge. We all know enough to be able to carry our own with a co in a conversation with somebody. Ring your radio stations when there's something going on. If you can't, stick it on Twitter. Put it on the forum so somebody else can. Yes, I, I would echo that. Get it? If you, if you hear something coming on your local radio, because bear in mind we can't hear everything, uh, you know, get it up there. There's bound to be somebody on Twitter at the time that if, if you feel you can't go on, somebody else, another gobshite like me, will get on. Laurie and Posh, she'll get on. See, uh, hello, I'm Laurie and I wish to talk about electronic cigarettes because I'm posh. She'll get on. She'll give them what for. Mm. Sav, what's chat saying? Chat, I've had a lot to say. I'm going to go back to Nikki Sinclair for a little bit. Um, Mosley said she is a proper politician who actually represents her constituents. Very boring says she is a giant and he means that in the political sense. Mm -hmm. Moonlit says careful, Nikki may start giving politicians a good name. Blaze has said, CC any letters to MEPs and MPs to your local newspapers. Mm. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, CC. Don't be CC, CC. Yeah, which is brilliant. Whip It Up says, regarding contact and MPs and MEPs, he says, is it not too little too late now, though, Dave? No. No, it absolutely isn't too little too late. One, it's not too little. Um right at the beginning of this whole struggle which is now 13 months back the information that we needed was partly there over the last 12 months so much more information has come out of the woodwork studies that have been completed that were taken two and three years to do all of that kind of, of information is now available it's there for you to quote the fact of the matter is and I've believed this from day one of my ever existing, really. It's never over till the fat lady sings. And I've been hammering corks into every fat lady's gob I can find. We have got the chance to speak to MEPs because they're going to have to vote on all of this. Now, I, I happen to know that there are... MEPs and groups in the European Parliament that are busily flying through all of the arcane rules and regulations that they have about how votes and, and everything else work to try and find ways, a number of different ways, of stopping this dog's dinner of legislation from going through. Even, even Chris Davis, who seemed to have had a change of heart, seems to have had another one. And he, too, is trying to find ways of preventing the idiocy from occurring. They need us to be making representations to our MEPs. They need us to be providing this kind of evidence to our MEPs, such that 
they cannot in good conscience go and press the send it through unaltered button they've got to either abstain or vote against that's the way we want it we want our MEPs to have that information to hand so that they cannot in all good conscience vote through something that will effectively end lives early so no it's not too little no it's not too late now we step it up now we make a bigger noise now we stand up and we are counted not just for us not just for our children for our children's children and for everybody who has yet to discover e-cigs that's what we've got to do Lorian. I think you just said it all, Dave. It is so much more. We've been saying this for months and months now. It's so much more than just us sitting in these rooms um, who could probably continue our habits when all this is done, whatever happens. It's about so much more than us. It's about so much more than us. And for whatever we say about the ITV programme, do you know what? It has brought e cigs to the fore. And now they're so prevalent and so in people's minds, they have to start asking vapours and including vapours in terms of balance. So there's a door open for us, even in the media, to start getting stuff done and be heard, because all of a sudden they're interested. Absolutely right. We've, we've seen that the hearts and minds of the general populace are being won. If we carry on doing what we're doing as users, as consumers, if we can show people that what we've taken up is working for us and it can work for them, then they'll try it. And in two years' time, what are the European governments going to do? What is the EU going to do when there are 60 million vapors in the EU? What are they going to do? Sav, as ever, it's over to you for the last words. I know there'll be a fair bit, but I know you'll also have one. It's over to you. I have to read out my favourite comment of the night. <laughs> and uh, it came from Mark Shaw and he just said... From some recent tweets I've been seeing, Chris Davis has done more 360s than Tony Hawk's, which I, I found hysterical. But my comment for tonight goes to Moonlit, and he said, if they had their way, we'd have no nicotine, no alcohol, no nice food, no caffeine, no recreational drugs of any kind, no sex, no porn. We would essentially have to become monks and nuns to appease these people. Not going to happen. And he's so right. You are... So right. It's we've got to go. We've run over. Um, I, I would sit and chew the fat all night. It's been a pleasure and a privilege as ever to share the last hour with you. And I know I keep saying that, but it is actually true. I look forward to Mondays and Thursdays. I really do. So that I just sit and, and, and share an hour with a community that I'm exceptionally proud to be part of. I want to say a great big thank you to Lorian, who was on standby, poor lamb, weren't you? I but was. but she went and made sure that she pushed herself up properly, <laughs> brushed her hair, combed her teeth, eh? I was practicing my accent. That's what it was. She brushed her hair, combed her teeth, made herself look pretty, and here she's been. Thank you for joining us. Your your input is always welcome. Um, and again, I can guess that your job has not been that easy tonight, Sav, because I do know chat's been hurtling past. Chat have been brilliant tonight, and I must give a little apology to Whip It Up. I took one of his comments slightly out of context, but it worked. Sorry, Whip It Up. That's fair enough. That was my fault. That's, my bad. that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, people, you know what to do. You know what to do. You are the best. Prove it, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget on. Well, tomorrow night, RY4 at 10 o'clock, the lock in. They swear on that. They swear. They swear on there, you know. Oh, horror. Saturday night. What time? Saturday night. Nine o'clock, Sav? I think so, yeah. I'm doing the Daz. And then on Sunday night, there's Dave's Tackle Box. That's at nine o'clock. And then at 10 o'clock, there'll be RY4. Then on Monday at nine o'clock, there's the Here's Hour with Dave and Kat. Seems that we didn't give us that last night. <laughs> I'll get you back, Daz. I will. Um... That's on, on Monday night. Tuesday night, we've got Marco van Basten and then DE Talk, our German language programme, and again, RY4. And then on Wednesday, Team Talk, 
and again RY4 and then Thursday we'll be back but don't forget right now DJ Bobo is spinning his wheels of steel and playing music as only he knows how over on RY4 radio until we see you all the next time all together now vape on vape hard and don't let the bastards grind you down cheery bye